Okay, so continuing on with domain 4.3, now we're going to go over analysis. So an let me make sure, yep, analysis. So first thing we're going to talk about is confirmation. So let's say we get alerted that, hey, our assigned systems or IDS systems alerted us that there may be potential exploit. There may be a potential incident happening. Well, we're going to have to look at the scanning flags, okay? Is this a false positive? Is it a false negative? Is it a true positive or a true negative? So to quickly go over this, a true positive, that means a rule was matched and the attack is present. A false positive means the rule matched but no attack is present, meaning the system's thought, maybe based on their heuristic analysis, their uh, behavior analysis, that there was an anomaly and there wasn't. A true negative, meaning yes, nothing happened. We didn't get alerted, we're just doing our log dives and we see that nothing happened. And then a false negative, it's probably the worst thing, right? That's where we're doing our log dives. Maybe we're doing some scanning. We're doing threat hunting. And we say, hey, there's an attack present, but we didn't get alerted. So our systems are not alerting us properly. So that's how we confirm if something is an incident or not. Analysis prioritize. So prioritizing vulnerabilities is crucial for effective resource allocation and risk management. Focus on the most critical weaknesses first. So essentially, let's say we do a scan. We notice three vulnerabilities. Let's say one vulnerability is a level 10, but it's on an end user. And that end user maybe works two days a week in office, and that's on the computer in office. But then we have a vulnerability level six, but that's on a critical e-commerce server. And if that gets data breached, then we're going to have a big GDPR fine. Well, now, even though one's more severe, which one do we attack first? So we need to prioritize based on our security objectives based on the business objectives, based on our assessment. And we have to do contextual analysis, right? We have to consider our threat landscape, the value of that asset, and how it can affect the business, okay? And then also, if it's a low priority, but it's going to take a big lift, and it's going to take a lot of resources to do the patch or the fix action, maybe according to our risk appetite, we don't fix it, right? Or maybe it goes in the backlog. Okay, something we're going to talk about is the Common Vulnerability Scoring System. So this is the standard of how we score how severe a CVE or vulnerability is. So the CVSS provides a standardized framework for rating the severity of security vulnerabilities, enabling consistent and clear communication across this, the entire cybersecurity landscape. So if you just, I mean, go to Google. I'll do this on a screen off to the side here. You can just see the National Institute of Standards Technology, NIST, go over these vulnerability metrics, okay? You have a CVS scoring calculators, the scoring system, right? So this is, just, this is very common, right? It's what we use. And when a CVE comes out, we give it a CVSS score, okay? So the severity ratings, assign a numerical score to a vulnerability reflecting its severity, um, we have temporal and environmental metrics. Those are going to be the base metrics we use. We have the base, the temporal, and environmental metrics um, that are going to give us a CVSS score, right? There's other things involved in it. Here we see the 2.0 and the 3.0 rating. So obviously, this is going to be the current one, right? Okay, the common vulnerability enumeration. So CVE is a reference method for publicly known information security vulnerabilities, and exposures. So again, if we just look up CVE, we go to cve.miter.org. This will can give us the total CVE records. Let's see here. And yeah, guys, you, you can, if you're curious, you can go through and learn about all the CVEs out there. And these will be published, right? When a CVE comes out, this will be published. You should be integrating some threat feeds or some, some way to you to be uh, as a cybersecurity professional, be aware of all the known CVEs and new ones to make sure that there's nothing in your network that has that vulnerability, okay? So this provides a unique identifier. So you see down here, this is log J4, very popular. It was a CVSS score of 10. It provides a standardized description, offers a clear and concise explanation of a vulnerability. And then it's widely accepted. So everyone uses this, right? Everyone uses CVEs to describe vulnerabilities. So if I bring up this quick Google search here, let's just look up the CVE. 
10, right? Look at that base score, 10. Okay, here's that vector. You can use this as part of your scanning too, guys, a vector, something we don't go over too much in um, the Security Plus. But yes, this is the CVE, okay? So we see the version 2.0. So it's only a 9.3 there. But the, the 3.0 is pretty much a standard now, right? There'd be no really clear reason why we'd want to use one over the other or like use the old one over the new one. But okay, let's move on. So analysis, so vulnerability classification. So classifying vulnerabilities helps in understanding their nature, potential impact, and the required approach for mitigation. So the type of vulnerability, we want to identify it, right? We're going to identify what it is and what it does if we have a vulnerability discovered on our network. Is it attacking web applications? Is it attacking endpoints? Is it attacking Linux operating systems? The impact assessment. So we're going to give a quantitative or maybe a qualitative report of the impact of a vulnerability that's discovered, especially if it is or if it does get exploited. And then a mitigation strategy. So if there's a known vulnerability, active or passive on our network, meaning is it exploited or not, we have to give a mitigation strategy. So as a SOC analyst or working in the SOC, cybersecurity engineer, that's something we have to be aware of, that we have to deliver. Exposure factor. So the exposure factor quantifies the potential loss or damage that a vulnerability could cause if exploited, aiding in risk assessment. So potential impact quantification. So this is the estimates, the percentage of asset value lost due to a vulnerability. The asset valuation. So this determines the value of an asset at risk. And then the risk calculation input. This serves as a critical input for calculating the overall risk associated with the vulnerability. So a lot of times I like to think of this in monetary terms, right? So the exposure factor, the EF, is what's the value of this asset, right? And if it does get exploited, how much is it going to cost us? Environmental variables. So environmental variables consider the specific context and conditions under which a vulnerability exists. So what we're saying here is, hey, we have this open port on a server, the SMB port, let's say. But we need it. It's a file server, and maybe that's just in our legacy environment, we need it open. But one thing we can do is at least filter it outbound, though. We can say in this environment, yes, we have a vulnerability, the SMB port open, but we're filtering it outbound. So the only way it's going to get exposed is if a insider threat attacks us. So now we're going to have to increase physical security, make sure our access control methods are good, and educating our users on potential insider threats, okay? So that's like our compensating controls for that. Industry and organizational impact. So understanding the potential impact of vulnerabilities on the specific industry or organization helps us prioritize. So let's say there's a worm propagating throughout our ICS systems. But let's say all it does is just change some files around on our, the, the computing systems. Not the essential files, like we're talking operating system files, maybe just on the desktop, right? Well, if our ICS is just communicating using like DMP3, we're just doing short range communication to produce something in manufacturing, and a couple of our users' computers are just acting real slow, what's the priority there? Yes, we're going to want to fix it, but are we going to shut down the factory to fix it? Probably not, right? So we have to consider the compliance requirements and potential penalty penalties for the industry. Some organizations, like when they violate GDPR, they get fined, they consider that a cost of doing business. So maybe in their drawing boards, they're like, hey, we're going to sell this user information. We're going to violate data privacy. And we're going to gain more from that than the potential fee payout, right? So reputation and trust. So we have to evaluate, hey, we're going to class, even though the CVSS score is a five, if this gets exploited, this could tarnish our reputation and trust, financially impacting us. Call the entire SOC team in, right? Call the on-call people in. Okay, and then obviously we want to go over our risk tolerance. So risk tolerance defines the level of risk an organization is willing to accept. This is going to guide the decision-making process. So our risk appetite. If we have a low risk appetite, we're saying we don't want no risk. We want to be secure at all times because we want to build that reputation. Then that means every vulnerability is going to be very important, right? If we have high risk appetite, if something's going to take up resources away from enabling the business in other ways to be making profit, 
Well, guess what? We may have something vulnerable in that system. This is going to help us make informed decision making. So we're going to ensure that our risk management strategies align with the organization. We don't want to be cowboys, right? If we're there to enable the business to be profitable, we want to make sure that we're doing exactly that and align with the risk appetite and risk tolerance. Okay, now let's do our check on learning. So now we're going to go over domain three, the analysis section. So in risk assessment, what does the exposure factor represent? That's going to be A, the percentage of assets exposed to a specific vulnerability. So in risk assessment, the exposure factor represents the percentage of value an asset loses when a vulnerability is exploited. It's used in calculating the single loss expectancy by multiplying the exposure factor by the asset value. So we're saying that if an asset is worth 10,000 and the exposure factor is 0.5, that means our single loss expectancy is 500. So this is the percentage of assets exposed to a specific vulnerability. And this is going to come into play in our single loss expectancy equation, which we're going to use to get our annual loss expectancy by multiplying the ARO. That's for another section. Question two, in the context of security assessments, what is a false negative? So a false negative, that's going to be B, a situation where a security tool fails to identify an actual vulnerability. So a false negative occurs when we don't get alerted, right? We're like, hey, we're looking at our logs here. This is clearly data exfiltration. That is a false negative. Question three, what is the purpose of the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, CVSS? That's going to be C, to score and rank the severity of vulnerabilities in information systems and have a consistent way to do it that's recognized, right? That's the point of CVSS. Question four. What does risk tolerance refer to in the context of vulnerability management? That is going to be the maximum level of risk that an organization is willing to accept before taking action, okay? So if the risk tolerance is high, we're saying, hey, we, we can risk it. We don't want to uh, allocate funds. We don't want to prioritize it. Low means fix it right now. Question five. In the context of vulnerability management, what is a false positive? That's going to be B, a perceived vulnerability that doesn't actually exist, but is reported by a security tool. Question six, how do environmental variables like industry or organizational impact influence vulnerability management? So it's going to affect how we prioritize, how we respond, right? If we're following HIPAA, PCI, electrical industri industry, the, the government, that's going to influence our security objectives, right? And how we prioritize and respond to vulnerabilities. 